Welcome to this edition of Stock Market Pulse. This is Eric. Today is Friday, January 29th. It's about 1 p.m. This is the last trading day of the month. And I wanted to just kind of do a quick review of, you know, kind of what's happened in January. Obviously, January has been pretty negative, although we are getting a little bit of a bounce here um, in this, you know, final week or at least final couple days. A lot of these have to do with earnings or some oil um, kind of related news that they may be able to cut output, which should kind of stabilize some of the price of oil. But um, so a lot of things going on. I want to bring you to attention to another chart I'm going to show you in a minute has to deal with buybacks. But first of all, let's just take a quick glance at the market and looking at the SPY and checking out the weekly chart right now. We're up 1.67% today. And I want to just kind of, you know, look at these levels that we've sort of bounced off of. And we are, you know, putting in you know, like I said, it's 1 p.m. We still have a little bit before the close. Uh, we are putting in sort of a reversal pattern just on the weekly candlestick. I also have um, sort of a buy signal here. I like to look at the DMI stochastic extreme, which is um, basically the same formula as a stochastic, but instead it uses the values of the oscillator as opposed to price. So it's a little bit of a different look, but pretty good for momentum shift. So what I like to do is look at the DMI oscillator and see what it's doing and then determine if these buy or sell signals are worth taking or not. So um, so there's a couple things for the weekly chart. First of all, we're very, you know, oversold. We've had a, you know, big sell off in January and, um, you know, we kind of hit some support levels. We're near um, the lower band of our Keltner channel. And as you can see, this has kind of been some support areas from before. So this is one of the, the reasons why I say, okay, well, where's, what's the DMI oscillator doing? Where are we? So if we're at support, the DMI oscillator, it didn't quite get as oversold as we did when we dipped last August. Um, however, um, we did get down to that level and the oscillator is actually pretty oversold here as well. It's starting to turn up this week as well as the, the buy signal. So in this case, you know, we, and during this, this, you know, you looked at this buy signal, it's not quite the same, is it? Yes, this is a green arrow. You're getting a tick up. Actually, the, the buy signal would have been more here right when it ticks up. I don't always wait for the green arrow, but it went from oversold. We ticked up here. Um, and yes, this ticked up, but it, it really wasn't as oversold as the previous ones. And we weren't really near the lower band. So this is kind of a, uh, you know, do we, you know, you could take a lip, take this signal, but obviously, things didn't turn out that way. Plus you have the turn of the turn of the beginning of the year. And a lot of times that's kind of volatile as well. So, but this, what we're looking at, I think there's a couple reasons why we could bounce in the February. The obvious reason is we're bouncing now and we have a reversal signal, but my indicators are telling me that there's, it's worth looking at the long side. Um, but I also want to bring in this picture. Let me, let me kind of get this set up here. Uh, sorry about that. So this was a chart that went out, I believe, um, either late December, early January, and basically talked about uh, the share of total repurchase activity month by month, excluding 2008. So when you, you hear all these companies, they talk about um, doing buybacks. Um, this is the sort of chart of the average of when they do those buybacks. So this, this was an article called Beware January. And true to its form, January is one of the weakest months for large companies to uh, per repurchase their shares. And you can see that starts to increase in February and March. So what we're doing is we're coming off this oversold situation. If this chart um, you know, holds any kind of water, um, and I think it does, I mean, obviously anything can happen, right? Um, but there is a, a chance that larger companies will start buying more shares of their own stock back, and this could ultimately propel the market higher. So that's something to kind of, you know, on the fundamental side, if you will, not quite fundamentals of business, but just uh, the way the markets work, this is something to keep an eye on. And I'm going to keep referring back to this. You can see, you know, April's another weak month, May, May and June are relatively strong. And, and look at this, it's like the first quarter of each month tends to be the weaker month for the share buybacks. Now, that doesn't mean the market's going to follow this. It just says that if we're oversold already and money's going to start coming in and we're getting some reversal patterns, you got to be looking at the long side here, right? And believe me, I've been I've been uh, 
you know, bearish here as well. I've been trading smaller time frames. So this video, I'm trying to focus on a little bit bigger time frames, weeklies and things. So let's let's close out of that. Let's go back to the chart here. Um, so let's look at a couple other things. Now, if you haven't done so already, um, go to the website, stockoptionassassin.com and sign up for my 2016 trading plan. And one of the videos there, I talk about some of the things I use to sort of gauge the macro um, and a lot of times I look at the SPY, but we're also going to look at bonds here. Uh, TLT is looking relatively strong, um, which is actually interesting. I'm, we're, I'm actually getting a lot of mixed signals, but um, they're very, very strong here. Now, in a strong economy, bonds can go up with stocks. Previously, the last few years, bonds have been kind of a safe haven when stocks go down. So today we're getting some sort of confluence where bonds are up 1%. The stock market, you know, the, the S&P is up, you know, 1.7%. A lot of this has to do with the, the Bank of Japan saying they're going to do negative interest rates. This sent the dollar sort of soaring higher, 1%, right? doesn't look like a lot here. I'm looking at the UUP, but this is a nice bullish consolidation. And what I'm looking for is for the dollar to break out here because, you know, Europe is still doing stimulus. Bank of Japan is going to be doing stimulus forever, apparently. Um, I don't know if they've been doing it since the 80s or not, but it's been, you know, they're, they're, they've had some issues, right? So, um, so the greenback is definitely the, you know, uh, strength of the world here. And the way China's going, if China starts to stimulate there, the yuan will go down as well. And the reason why I bring this up, I don't typically trade currencies or the dollar, but I like to look at this because when this goes higher, right, what you're going to see typically, right, typically is a good word, is you're typically, typically, excuse me, going to see things like gold go lower. Okay. So if we look at the weekly chart of gold, it hasn't really issued a sell signal yet. However, we're very, very overbought. We're somewhere near that over um, upper band, excuse me. And, you know, this isn't the oscillator's not telling us too much here. Um, but I would be looking for a dollar breakout and gold to sort of make a new leg lower if that continues to hold true, if the dollar actually moves lower. So we, if we drill this down to a daily chart, let's see what this looks like. So we're already getting a sell signal on the daily chart. Um, one thing I have in here is uh, some bearish divergence with gold where, you know, we kind of broke out here. There's a lot of fear in January. Gold's going higher. And then all of a sudden, um, the oscillator really isn't doing the same. Let me just delete that. I didn't draw that very well before. Right. So there's a little bit of a bearish divergence with this, this last pop in gold. And given the fact that um, the dollar is going higher, I'm, I'm ha kind of having a hard time seeing uh, gold go higher with it, right? So next week, I think could be, you know, sort of a pivot turning point. I think next week, the first trading day of the month, I think it's going to be a bullish day, typically, because that's when a lot of big money starts to go to work with pension funds and all that stuff. Um, but so what I'll be looking for is how gold handles that, right? If gold starts to move lower, I would want to be short gold. We're looking at, um, if we look at the, you know, we got 21 days left. You could probably do some bear call spreads or something on the GLD. There's also some ETFs, inverse ETFs. I don't really look at the miners right now, but the point is I'm looking at the dollar gold um, correlation. Right now they're both up on the day, so it's kind of weird. So like I said, I'm not doing anything about this today. The other thing that's kind of weird that sort of has me hesitate of taking anything new before the weekend is oil is actually down. And there's a lot of, um, you know, talk about Iran coming back online with sanctions being lifted. And there's a lot of rumors this week. And I think that's partly propping up the market this week. Hopefully they'll, you know, for the bulls that those rumors would turn true that, that um, you know, Saudi Arabia, Russia, these guys will sort of control the output, which would sort of stabilize the prices. And if that happens, you're going to get those big oil names sort of coming back. So I'm looking at names like CVX, right? 5% dividend, by the way, I think they report, is it today? Or that it was, yeah, it was before, before, I guess they already reported, but the point is actually, actually they, let me bring that up there. Yeah, they reported this morning and they were under, but guess what? The stock's holding up. You know why it's holding up? Because there's a potential deal for uh, oil, right? Going higher. If oil goes higher, CVX goes higher, right? 5% dividend. If you're a long-term guy, I'd be checking that out. Exxon Mobil coming up, oil goes higher, 
um, Exxon Mobil goes higher. And there's a bunch of other names you can you can look them up if you want. Um, so the other thing we'll look at is the VIX real quick. Um, the VIX is down, and obviously the volatility is sort of coming in. Um, so you know today's rally is interesting. Um, I, I I don't want to say at this point because I'm not sure if you know quote unquote is the rally real? Is this a real rally? What does that mean? For me, a real rally means the VIX goes down, right? Stocks are up, obviously. Um, but things like safe havens are going down as well. And gold is not going down, okay? It's not really going up either, but it's kind of, you know, if it was all like, you know, completely risk on day, all money was flowing in the stocks because we're going to make a new leg higher, my perception is that gold would be down. My perception is that bonds would be down. And like I said, so I'm getting a little bit kind of mixed signals here. Um, not that, like I said before, not that uh, TLT or the bonds can't go higher with the market because they can. Right now, I'm trying to evaluate, is that, is that what is happening, right? So one day doesn't make a trend or anything, but... Uh, but today is definitely interesting for sure. And, and you keep getting these headlines out of these other countries. So anything can happen next week. I'm basically mostly Delta neutral at this point. I have some, uh, I'm not going to go into this video because the video is already getting kind of long. Um, but basically I have a, some big condor on the, on the SPX. I mean, do I have the lines on this one? I do have the lines on this one. So I have a condor spread that spans my break evens are on 1996 all the way down to 1800. So if the next couple weeks, the market stays between these levels, then the premium will get sucked out of my spread and I'll make money. So that's that's sort of my sideways move because I'll be honest with you, I got chopped up a little bit in some of these intraday moves. I've been training, you know, I, I went down to hourly charts, did really well, tried to go to four hour charts, got chopped up. So for me, I'm not quite ready to for the bigger swing trade yet because like I said, we don't know if the rally is for real, but at the same time, I would not be going home this weekend heavily short because you got that bottoming tail. Um, let's let's take a look at this on the Nasdaq. We looked at the um, I'm gonna go back to the weekly chart. We looked at the spiders already, but look what the Nasdaq's doing here, right? So again, lower band, you know, not quite as much as the August sell-off, and you're getting a little tick up here on the DMI tick up here. To me, I think it's if anything, you'd want to be slightly long, um, or if you do want to, you know, get short, you're gonna have to do it with with uh, uh, bear call spreads and not directionally. So. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's my little wrap up for the week, a little bit of the month and what we're looking at. And we'll see how that plays out. You guys have a great night and we'll see you at the next update.